As I recently wanted to get into streaming shiny hunting, I needed to find a way to record the screen of a 3DS console. The most common option for streamers is to get a capture card installed on their console, or to get a system with a pre-installed capture card. However, this option turned out to be too expensive for me, so I chose a less popular solution, using the NTR-CFW on a hacked new 3DS system. The purpose of this video is to briefly introduce NTR-CFW's screen recording capacity, and then to compare it to a capture cards. NTR is a custom firmware overlay running on top of a hacked system, in my case, a new 3DS with the Luma 3DS custom firmware and ARM9 loader hacks. Its principal feature is to offer a debugging interface for the 3DS system. Developers can make add-ons for NTR and this capacity is mostly used to develop cheats. But what interests us is its Wi-Fi video streaming feature that is exclusive to the new 3DS line. The video stream can be received by a computer with the help of a debugger and viewer software. Four options will affect the quality of the received stream. First, the priority mode. This will define which screen will get the priority. Second, the priority factor. This will define how much this screen will get prioritized. Then, the compression factor, to control the quality and the size of the stream. And lastly, the stream's bandwidth limit. The first two values are situational, and you will need to find values fitting to the game you want to stream, given that the screen that doesn't get prioritized will usually have a much lower frame rate. The last two values will depend on the quality of your Wi-Fi access point. The better it is, the higher values you will have to set to get a higher quality stream. Naturally, there will be noticeable, albeit subtle lag between the console and the stream, so if it matters in the game you're playing, you will need to watch the console screen rather than your computers. There's no sound streaming. To capture the sound, you will need to use a mail-mail jack cable to connect your 3DS to your computer's line or microphone input. As the video is streamed over Wi-Fi, you'll need to enable wireless connection in some games, notably Pokemon that disables it by default. You won't be able to use NTR when the console is in DSi mode, as when you play DS or GBA Virtual Console games. With all of that said, let's compare this to what a capture card has to offer. As of the time when this video is made, capture cards are only available for Nintendo 3DS, 3DS XL and 2DS, as opposed to NTR-CFW's streaming feature that is only available for new 3DS and new 3DS XL. In Europe, a capture card costs around 2,040 euros without the system, and you will have to wait usually several months to get it installed. On the other hand, NTR-CFW is completely free, but you need to hack your system if you didn't already do it. With a capture card, you'll get exactly the same frame rate as you do on your console, whereas with NTR, it will usually vary between 25 and 40 frames per second. The output of a capture card is uncompressed, unlike the one you'll get with NTR. The sound coming from a capture card is mediocre compared to connecting your console with a jack cable to your computer. Obviously, that's something you can do even if you have a capture card. Finally, the capture card is compatible with the 3DS's DSi mode. In conclusion, a capture card is technically a better deal if you can afford the money and the time to get one. But this doesn't invalidate NTRCFW's position as a viable alternative. I hope this video helped. If you'd be interested in a more in-depth video about setting up NTRCFW, please tell me so in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Bye.